I mean, we were talking about it yesterday. Uh, yeah. I, I I love the film. Uh, it's it's you know it, it was such a fun ride. Now, I I love that you know you're you're going into a completely different horror genre or subgenre coming off of Wally's Wonderland. And I, I'm curious, was that always the goal for you coming off of Wally, or was it just this script really caught your your interest to want to take that dive? Well, it's interesting because you know uh, you get pigeonholed right sometimes in Hollywood. You know and and so for me, it's like, I want to do something different. I mean, I love Willie's. Willie's always be very important to me. Um, but when I read the script, it was really cool to do something more, a little more darker and sinister and, and kind of get into the weeds with the characters and, and, and the, the, whole, the whole story and the narrative. And I love the themes about, you know, regret and, and guilt and how it can eat you alive and facing your demons. So yeah, it was really cool to kind of stretch those muscles. To me as a filmmaker, you're always wanting to try to challenge yourself, right? And you don't want to really repeat. So, um, and you know, I just found the script and I was like, man, we got we got to do this. So, yeah. So, what would you then say was one of your biggest creative challenges in in flexing those different muscles for this one? Um, well, I really like the whole idea of setting tone and atmosphere on, on the movie and the, so for me that was one of the things was like I knew that that was necessary for this film. And at the end of the day, it was about these characters and the narrative. So I really just concentrated on, on getting that right. It's funny because when I was cutting the picture, I didn't temp it with any music. I really just focused on getting the story right. Because sometimes, you know, you temp things and try to like maybe hide things or hide mistakes or something or do a little more flashy. And I was like, I knew that this wasn't the, the movie for that. And I just wanted to go old school with it, you know, what I used to do, you know? So yeah, so that was pretty cool. So since you mentioned the cutting of it, I am curious, is there a, a longer version of this movie that exists? Because oftentimes with with the horror genre, I feel like that that tends to be the case. Yeah. Um, gosh, there, you know what? I think the way I did it, I, I shot the cut just like Willie's, right? I only, sh you know, I don't have a lot of time. So I kind of cut it in my head a little bit and I kind of shoot what I need to shoot. Um, yeah, I mean, there's some things I could have extended and there's some moments here in terms of, uh, you know, a director's cut or something. I feel that this is pretty, pretty solid. You know, I feel like this is the movie. Well, that's good. Cause that's always the, you, you hear too often. I feel nowadays about, oh, that's not my cut, but uh, I'm glad that this is yeah. your version. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so I, I, I hesitated to ask yesterday since so much yeah. of the cast were online, but I mean, yeah. What was it like, you know, the, the casting process for this one, finding the perfect people for all of these wonderful characters? I mean, they were great. Like, you know, you, you could see yesterday, we have a good uh, relationship and, and they just sparked to the material. And I met with them, we had a great meeting and it was just like, man, you know, they're, they're perfect for the part and let's roll, let's make this movie. So um, it was just wonderful working with each and every one of them. Was there any one character that you found to be, the either the most challenging to cast or the most important uh, to cast in your mind? Gosh, um, no, they all kind of fell into place. Um, I felt like when I was, when we sent the script to them and they responded and then I met with them and talked with them, I just felt like, man, this is very organic and it feels just right, you know? So for me, it was like, okay, you know, we were concerned about like the Ambrose part because it's like, all right, they're in bed a lot, you know, and are they going to want to do that? And there's always these things with, with, with the, with parts where you go, gosh, is the actor going to do that? But at the end of the day, you really don't know, right? You don't know what's going on in their head and, or how did they just rap and do a movie like this? I, I don't know, you know? So um, it's kind of like, you just kind of go with your gut, you know, and say, Hey, you know, I think they would be great for this and hopefully they feel the same way. So. Now, Meg is, of course, uh, an iconic actress, especially for the genre. So how did it feel for you when you when you got that confirmation that she was interested to be a part of it? Oh, I was so happy, you know, because the thing was, is like there was a time where maybe she couldn't do it because there were scheduling conflicts. And I was like, God, we got to make this work. But then there's a part of being a director, especially the indie film. It's like, look, you only have a certain amount of days. And is that like, you know, there's things you can try to move and move mountains and there's some things you can't, you know? So I was concerned about that. But when we got her and I had a FaceTime with her, I FaceTime with her for like two hours or three hours. I mean, it was just, it was just a great conversation. And I was like, I was just thrilled that she wanted to do this movie. She's such a, 
beautiful person you know she really is and um and a legend i mean just a legend you know you know what's interesting with meg she says that when she does parts she forgets about them after she can't even remember she goes to places and and things and then she just doesn't even remember what she did or what she said or anything so she kind of inhabits that role and then she kind of just sheds it and, and and moves on it's it's really fascinating Wow. Yeah, that, that is incredible. And she inhabited this role so well. I mean, she, that, that opening scene, especially, I loved the tone that that set right out the gate. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's funny. Cause I, when I read the script, I was like, gosh, this is a mini movie in itself, which is awesome. And, and I love films where, you know, things happen and then you, you kind of, kind of forget about them or whatever. And then at the end, it all comes back. Right. And so that's what happens with this one. And and so you're kind of, you, you, you set it up, you set the world up, but then you kind of go, you get out of that world, you start going on the journey with Ellie and, and Beth and all that stuff, but then you come back to it, you know, and um, that was just really cool. So yeah, she was, she was incredible. You know, that, that blood she drank, that was just improv. Um, that was just, she, she just, she just drank it. And I was freaking out because prop master was like oh my gosh that's like dishwater soap colored and all that so oh my god but meg went for it and that's who she is i mean when she gets into it she gets in it she is fearless and i think that's one of the qualities you need as an actor nick is the same way from willie's just fearless just he'll do it he'll just get into it and do it and i just i just think that's so awesome you know i'm glad that you've now had two legends who were willing to take that ride with you that's that's yeah. wonderful yeah. Um, now, what was it like location scouting for this one? Because I love the isolated setting that is the majority of this film. It, it adds so well to the atmosphere of it. That's awesome. Yeah. The, the thing is, is it was tough. You know, um, I went out location scouting um, like uh, three weeks or something before we started pre-production. And I came back. I was supposed to get a cabin and everything. And I, I, I came. I went to. We shot in Savannah, Georgia. And then I came back home, and I had a library and an office. And I was like, "Wow!" For that four days, I couldn't find it, you know. And our great line producer, Lorene Yako, she's fantastic. She found this uh, abandoned. Uh, well, it's an abandoned school um, that the church bought. And, 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 but they, but because it was COVID, they were having sermons on the weekends. So it was empty. So we built the whole cabin, the interior in the, in the church, in the, in the gymnasium. And uh, which was really cool because like evil dead Two, right. They built the cabin in, in, in a, in a, in a gym. So I thought that was just awesome. Um, and Burns, our production designer, um, he, he's, he, he did such a fantastic job and uh, he, he, he basically did the blueprints and we built it. Cause I wanted to have, access with the camera right so i can move walls and, and do the fun stuff you know and i didn't want to be i didn't want to be hogtied to a to a practical location and then we found the exterior on this uh this house about 10 15 minutes away from um our our location in the gym and it was just perfect you know and it had the the just the swampy feel and the, the willow trees and that the air the thick you know just the savannah vibe and it was just great so we kind of matched that so that's kind of how we did that well it comes across perfectly uh because it yeah that i i honestly thought that was all in an actual cabin so that's very seamless um now with doing that on a in a church though did you ever get any kind of odd vibes while you were filming of like oh something's not right here <laughs> you know it's funny because i was like gosh when we were talking about doing it there i'm like gosh have they read the script i mean are they really are they gonna let us do it but they were so nice and and and, and really really wonderful to work with and um you know it was really cool i mean just building that cabin and having it you know and, and benji was uh, uh, on construction with a he 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 helped with burns and they just did such a fantastic job that crew so yeah I, I i really wanted to do build the cabin on, on a stage because i just felt we just had more latitude i could move the camera and just get more things done rather than being tied to some you know practical location so i was happy that we kind of melded the two you know well yeah it it uh like i said it works great so i'm glad you got to i'm glad that worked out for you um now i love when we finally see the demon i know i had mentioned that yesterday but i love how how it happens as well i mean what was that like you know putting that together was that a lot of the effects was that a lot of practical effects how did that come about 
so you know of course we storyboarded it which was like was really cool and just kind of said okay here's what we want to do um entropic uh, who's uh, wonderful they, they did all the post and vfx on it so we we had uh, uh dave came, came out from entropic and he basically uh you know we scanned the demon because we had a practical demon and we had a hand a prop hand so he did all that and we just kind of walked through like how it was going to be and we storyboarded it and said okay this is the shot here is on dave newbert who shot the accursed shot uh willie's wonderland he's a cinematographer he did such a great job too and uh, so we just were like, okay, this is how we're going to build it. And this is what we want to do. And so we it really did take a lot of thought and care because that is a big reveal, right? And um, doing, a, doing an indie film, you know, you can get kind of mired down in the effects. And it's like if they're cheap effects because you don't have a lot of time or money or whatever, you know, it can come off that way. And I was very concerned with that because you're doing a movie that takes itself very seriously, right? And if you have cheap effects or you kind of cheap out on that, then, you know, all that goes away. And this isn't some, you know, kind of slasher vibe or something where you're just splattering blood every, you know what I mean? Like it's, it took a lot of thought and I wanted to make it elegant and interesting and, and different and just all that stuff. And so that was one of the challenges. A cinema makeup school did the demon effects, uh, did the suit. It's such an awesome job. And, and uh, Troy James was the demon and he's a contortionist. And so all that stuff is real. And it's, it's pretty cool because like the stuff he was doing, you would just hear the bones like pop, 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 pop. It was just really give you the willies a little bit, you know, but what a great and kind man. And he just did such an awesome job on this movie. I remember the, uh, the the women yesterday were saying how like it was hard yeah. to act alongside him because of how nice he was, and then he's he so nice. <laughs> demon slippers to... on, yeah, the black demon slippers on. Yeah, it was so good, cool. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, but then and then Entropic augmented the demon, so we had like the flies and uh, the, we 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 did the practical goo, but of course the flies were VFX, you know, and then we did this demon shake that was a VFX where every time he'd be, you kind of shake the image a little bit and we do this rumble with the sound, you know. Um, my good friend, Scott Harbert, um, he's an uh, executive producer on this film and he was sending me stuff about low frequency in, in horror movies and how if you do these low frequency, it just kind of unnerves you and so, and I just, I took that and ran with it. And um, I was really excited about this whole demon base because we would just, as that demon would come and shake, you hear this, whoa, 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 you know, bringing kind of his world into the living, the, their world, right? Um, so that was just so much fun uh, to experiment with. Well, and it's put to great effect because, yeah, I love, I, I, I have noticed that's a thing of late in horror genre of that, that little warble and you're just like, oh, I don't know yeah. if I like that, but yeah. it works. Um, cool. Before I let you go, uh, yeah. I, I am curious. I know that uh, around the time Willie's Wonderland was coming out, you had you had thrown around that there was maybe ideas for a sequel. And I'm curious, you know, has there been any any further thoughts or any updates on on that possibly happening? There's definitely a lot of talk and there's a lot of great ideas. Um, I mean, I, I have so many great ideas and, and, and so does Geo Parsons, the writer. Um, and we're all talking, so hopefully it, it would be great to do, you know, I think there's many adventures for the janitor and, and for the Willies gang out there, you know, so it, it would be really cool to do it, but we'll see, we'll see what happens, you know. Absolutely. Well, at least in the, in the meantime, we have the accursed to, to look yeah, forward to and yeah. spread the word about. And I know that now that it's Halloween season, I'm looking forward to rewatching that and rewatching Willie's. Uh, oh. I, I rewatch that all the time. It's a great movie. So, Kevin, thank you for taking the time again to talk with me. Uh, I, I greatly appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Greg. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anytime, buddy. OK, absolutely. Have a good weekend. Okay. You too. Bye bye.